733. ESPN 1063. WUUB Jupiter, a good karma brand's radio station. The Minnesota Timberwolves tweeted out pregame that they were going to make a statement. Well, I hope it was a police statement because that was the only thing stopping Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks last night. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios. The man, your man could smell it. Theo Dorsey is theoretically speaking. But are you a different animal and the same beast? What does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Streaming live on YouTube, here's Theo Dorsey. What an emphatic, emphatic series clinching win by the Dallas Mavericks last night. The NBA final stage is set. Game one will be on June 6th at the Garden, the one in Boston at least. Celtics versus Mavericks, Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving versus Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It's going to be a showdown, but but today we, we, we let that breathe. That's six days away. Teams are resting, and it's time now to more so reflect on how we got here And the way that we did get here, based off of the results of last night, it it feels like there's a man possessed wearing number 77 for the Dallas Mavericks that is going to be a problem, not just this June, but for the next decade to come. Luka Doncic was the one making a statement last night. I I thought it was so corny, C-Cat, when I saw the the Timberwolves tweet out their their uniforms pregame and say, you know, that we're making a statement. It's a statement game. And then, like literally seconds into the game, you realized exactly which way this thing was going to go. How soon into game five, C-Cat, did you punt on this thing and get yourself some sleep? Halftime. Halftime, I decided that I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to hold out hope and watch third quarter horrible basketball in in hopes in search of a historical comeback, it just wasn't going to happen. So I'm a sucker, right? I'm a mm. sucker, and and partially part of this is you know I am uh, the guy that just I, I absolutely love Anthony Edwards and these Minnesota Timberwolves. I like watching them play. I like how much electricity they usually provide. I like the charisma that Ant Edwards carries. He is one of the more captivating superstars we've seen in a while, and he's doing it at 22 years old. So I I wanted to kind of be able to soak in the last moments of watching him play NBA basketball this year. Um, So I did hang on all the way through the end of the game and followed through with some of the post-game coverage stuff. So I stayed up pretty late uh, into the night before our tea time this morning. Um, And I don't regret it. I don't regret it because sometimes it's not just about the destination. It's about the journey. And that's why I want to talk today about how specifically you will remember this 2024 postseason run from the Minnesota Timberwolves. It ended in a whimper, 124 to 103 at the Target Center at the hands of Luka Doncic, who when I say at the hands of Luka Doncic, I'm not just talking about how his hands were on the basketball. I'm talking about like he, he gave them the hands. He lined up and squared up, and as soon as that game started, he put his hands all over the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they wanted none of it. You said you tuned out at halftime. I I actually held out a little hope. I know Ernie Johnson on on TNT uh, last night, coming out of the half, he said, you know, the largest margin of victory, uh, or not the largest margin of victory, the largest deficit to ever be came back on in an NBA playoff elimination game was 16 points. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, wow, 29 points. Maybe the Timberwolves can give us some hope. Maybe we can see them fight back in the second half. And then, and then the opening play, after you would hope Chris Finch, head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves, would be able to draw something up or inspire some kind of will, some kind of heart out of his guys coming out of the break. The opening play really sealed the deal for me. Luka Doncic up top to Washington. Here it is. The Timberwolves are going to need the mother of all comebacks in this one. Doncic inside, and that's the way it begins with a high-flying Washington from Luka. Luka Doncic to P.J. Washington right over the head of the four-time uh, defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, who I still argue we need to relitigate. We need to be able to go back and maybe rescind some of those. One of those trophies at least should be in the cupboard or the trophy case of Bam Adebayo with the Miami Heat. You know, I, I'm not, I, of course, it's not going to happen, but if we could, please do, because the last couple of series I've seen out of Rudy Gobert have been uh, nothing short of just 
dismal, especially on the defensive end, because if he can't stop alley-oops over the top of his head, if he can't stop Daniel Gafford from getting put-back dunks and layups at the rim, and also, I mean, that switch out on game two, I mean, that's going to live in my head for the rest of my years. Luka Doncic with the step back draining it on him and yelling in his face like there are so many lasting memories we're going to have out of this Timberwolves and Mavericks series but I really wonder which one is the one that sticks out to you how will you remember the 2024 Minnesota Timberwolves run led by Anthony Edwards as now we watch it uh, just fall off and wane into the twilight it was incredible. It was immaculate. But I think the first takeaway that everybody has is it ended in outright dismantling embarrassment. How can you, at the target center, at home with your season on the line, following a game four that gave so much hope and inspiration to those home fans who spent thousands of dollars to be able to pack out the arena and hopefully cheer on the Timberwolves only to be uh, relegated to booze literally minutes into the first quarter. Or really, it was in the second quarter they let out the boos, but it was let down minutes into the first quarter. How can you feel anything less than outright embarrassment and disappointment in the Minnesota Timberwolves? I think that's first, but the real thing that we have to remember here is the Minnesota Timberwolves, before they disappointed the nation, before they disappointed their home fans once again like they've done throughout this postseason, they did reach somewhat of an apex, somewhat of a mountaintop in their second round series against the Denver Nuggets. Let's not forget that they went into the Mile High Arena where where the Denver Nuggets have been so historically good. That home court is maybe uh, as good as any home court or any home field advantage in all of sports. And they not only trailed by 20 points in a game seven on the road against the defending champs who had a three-time MVP, Nikola Jokic, but... They came all the way back, won that game, and it feels like there was a part of them that there was so much effort, so much, uh, not just energy that leaves your body physically, but emotional energy that was poured out and pulled out of them in that game seven that they limped their way into this Western Conference Finals, and it was a weird and a rough game one. And even following game four, there was something specifically I heard Anthony Edwards say, and he probably wishes he could take it back. We don't have the audio for you, but he he said, I I don't get swept, right? He was so relieved that he didn't get swept, and it felt like not just the accomplishment of that game seven win over the Nuggets, but that game four win over the Mavericks, there was a lot of letdown uh, from the Timberwolves following that. And some people might say it was exhaustion, I would say it was probably a mixture of the Timberwolves not having that experience, not having been there before. I mean, literally up and down that roster, there was nobody that you can lean on heavily and say, hey, how do we respond in this moment? Nas Reed, who's a baller, is 25 years old. Anthony Edwards was 22. We know his background. Carl Anthony Towns, he might be a former number one overall pick, but we've seen what his heart is like in the biggest moments, and a lot of times it leaves a lot to, uh, to yearn for. And, of course, Mike Conley, a guy who was with, with those grit and grind Grizzlies, it feels like he would be that veteran presence. But remember, that the Grizzlies team, it's not like they were playing in Western Conference Finals and, and making it to NBA Finals games. They were more so a team that would have uh, immaculate regular seasons and then some pretty big upsets in the first two rounds of the playoffs. But one key thing that Anthony Edwards said after Game 5 and that miserable loss is something that I think – should change things. It's a data point we can probably go back to when we look at the overall career of Anthony Edwards and we can start to dissect where exactly he maybe turned and started evolving. Uh, It was actually Ahmad Hicks, a sports anchor out in Minneapolis, who asked Anthony Edwards about how the Timberwolves would train, how they would try and bounce back this offseason, this summer, based on what just happened to them at the hands of some veterans at the hands of some some cutthroat dogs in Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. And Anthony Edwards had to say this afterwards. We trained this year as if we was going to just play 82 games, maybe one, one round of the playoffs. We didn't know we was going to go this far. So we didn't train like it this summer. I know nobody did, um, especially myself. So um, I think this summer is going to be huge for, for all of us because we know what type of team we got and we know what we're capable of. So we need to train like we know what we're going to do. The Mavericks are on to the NBA Finals. The Timberwolves are off to vacation. How will you remember this postseason run from Anthony Edwards, the Ant-Man, the rising of the Ant-Man, and those Minnesota Timberwolves? 888-760-3776. 
888-760-3776. What's the lasting memory of these Timberwolves? Was it how they eclipsed the Denver Nuggets in an immaculate Game 7? Was it maybe Anthony Edwards jaw jacking at Kevin Durant, his the guy that he grew up worshiping in basketball, but then them sweeping the Phoenix Suns? Or was it last night's display of, I mean, I don't know if you want to call it lethargic. I don't know if you want to call it just disheartened effort, but whatever it was, that's not what you expect out of a team that wants to contend for titles in a game where your back is against the wall, especially at home. 888-760-3776, 888-760-3776. That's the number to call in to theoretically speaking, the Baptist Health Hotline. Are you experiencing foot and ankle pain and need to see an expert in the field? Baptist Health Orthopedic Care, well, They have a team of foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons and specialists who are regarded as leaders in their specialty. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care combines its resources of experienced physicians and leading edge treatments and technology to provide advanced orthopedic, foot and ankle, joint replacement, spine and sports medicine care. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho for more information today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has offices conveniently located in Palm Beach County through the Florida Keys. Learn more by visiting baptisthealth.net slash ortho. A huge congratulations to the, uh, not the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Dallas Mavericks making the finals their third time. And congrats to the Celtics who await them. But how do you specifically remember? How are you going to recall and retake this 2024 run by Anthony Edwards and the Minnesota Timberwolves, 888-760-3776. It's also a very special day. If you like free things, if you like free things, today is your day, or theoretically speaking. It's not just a top five Friday where we'll address some NBA Finals news. It's also a day where we'll be giving away some Miami Marlins tickets, so make sure you stick around for that. We're going to have Mike Tannenbaum on a little later to talk about this big bill signing, as well as uh, there's a quarterback that he's falling in love with. I can't wait to find out why this NFC North quarterback is sticking out to Mike Tannenbaum. But we uh, we want to start with how you remember the Minnesota Timberwolves 2024 playoff run. We have Kenny in West Palm. Kenny in West Palm, you're on, theoretically speaking. And, I mean, first and foremost, did you stay up through all of Game 5 of Timberwolves Mavericks? Uh, I did because I had a nine game parlay and uh, it ended on eight legs. That's all I can say. I'm a little oh. upset. But yeah, I watched the whole thing. Kenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You- it, it, it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart, man. It was like plus 6,000. I was feeling really good about it and. I should have just took the payout. That's all I got to say. Oh, I'm, I'm hurt for you. And now I can't even feel like I'm, I'm taking the pain of that T-Wolves off. Now I feel for you, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, what was the last leg? Was it just like the Timberwolves spread or was it something different? It was, it was Anthony Edwards. I had him at under 27 and a half. And lo and behold, he scores 28 points. Wow. Ew. That was the last one. That was the last one. I, I thought, I mean, I'm glad you see cat. That's why I have you here. I'm glad you asked that question. I thought it was on the Timberwolves. You actually bet under on Anthony Edwards. And he, so what do you remember the I shot? Did. I hate to do this to you. Do you remember the shot that took it over the edge? Uh, I, I, I didn't because I was, um, I, I had like stepped away for a moment Ooh, and yeah. then I just looked down. I had my stats open on ESPN the whole night and, oh. and, and I just looked down and, and there it was. So I don't know. I don't even want to know. Oh yeah. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it, it's I'm trying to not to remember it. Kenny, it's, it's my journalistic duty to go find out. I won't tell you, I won't announce it, but Kenny, it, I, I feel for you. That supersedes anything I felt. I, I mean, I was going to ask you, I mean, how much you enjoyed the ride of the uh, Anthony Edwards-led Timberwolves run, but that's a sore way to go out. Kenny, uh, thoughts and prayers with you, my brother. You. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It was a really – honestly, watching Anthony Edwards, I mean, it, it. they talk about it a lot. It looked like a young D. Wade. Yeah. For I mean, he showed flashes of the flash, which is crazy, growing up from South Florida. I love- um, and that leads me to it. Go ahead, go ahead. I was about to say, I love that comp. No, I, I appreciate the call, Kenny. I, I love that comp right there with the D-Wade, with the D-Wade comp. A lot of people were getting ahead of themselves with the Michael Jordan stuff. He does look like a young Jordan, but he plays a lot like a, a young D-Wade. And I will say this, uh, betting the under on a guy who you enjoy watching play 
and having that option to cash out before if it's the end of a part like I, I would have probably cashed out. I mean, it's an elimination game, CCAT. Do you think that was that's, that's a tough call? Yeah, you know, it is tough because everyone's unhappy with the situation. Yeah. Like Ant hit is over, but lost the game. So no one's happy on the Timberwolves. And Kenny, who bet against the Timberwolves, theoretically, isn't happy either. Well, theoretically, theoretically, um, Anthony Edwards not doing that, not making it up for a guy, Kenny, that's going to be a strike against his resume. But for one for the uh, one strike in the good column for the Anthony Edwards resume is what he actually did as a 22-year-old in the NBA playoffs. I don't know if you saw this stat, CCAT, but Anthony Edwards, 400-plus points, 100-plus rebounds, and 100-plus assists in the NBA playoffs in one singular postseason – there's only one other guy that have hit those marks like Anthony Edwards did that in this playoffs, and that was 22-year-old LeBron James in 07. The Ant-Man still has a, a, a journey, a route to be able to become the face of the league. He, he'll never uh, be, be as enjoyed as Kenny and West Palm enjoyed him prior to him kind of ruining that parlay, but the Ant-Man does have a route to being the future face of the league. We'll discuss that Plus, we'll have to get to Mike Tannenbaum addressing specifically his newfound love for an NFC quarterback um, when we come back here on Theoretically Speaking. Also, make sure you stick around. We are giving away Miami Marlins tickets. We've got Miami Marlins tickets uh, to give away a four-pack, which is which is four tickets, right? Four-pack? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Four tickets up for grabs for the Marlins, who actually have been kind of hot as of late. They've been winning a lot of games. You can catch a win or two. Um, and if you actually find yourself in a sticky situation, uh, somewhat of maybe a setback, a loss because of a car accident, a truck accident, a slip and fall, well, Anna Jar and Levine accident and attorneys. That's how you turn that that setback, that loss into a win. Mark Anna Jar and Glenn Levine... They will fight for you because they don't get paid unless you do. They fight to get you the maximum compensation you deserve. Call Anajar and Levine for your free consultation. Don't just settle for any attorney. Demand Anajar and Levine. That's the Anajar and Levine difference. And it takes just one phone call to take back control of your life. So take back control of your life. Call 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Uh, Mike Tannenbaum, when we come back, plus, again, we're going to have to dig up and figure out how Anthony Edwards got that last bucket and prayers up for our guy Kenny in West Palm. I mean, an eight-leg parlay ending like that is sick. You're Half being, a point. You're being too easy on the Timberwolves, by the way, Theo. They got eliminated last night. You know, this isn't. Yeah. We're not in Minneapolis. We're not in Minnesota. Like we don't have to celebrate the season that was. We still have basketball to play well, with guys who played better. There's a lot of people who are nostalgic and, and reminiscing on the past. They're like, oh, I want LeBron back and KD back. I'm more celebrating the hunt for that new face of the NBA. I like the new data points on these newfound stars. So you're right. So we need to talk more about that guy, Luka Doncic who really put on a show and is still going to be playing basketball this year. I appreciate you calling me out on that, CCAT. <laughs> uh, when we come back, Mike Tannenbaum joins the show. We're talking some football. We're talking an Olympic gold medalist joining a title contender. What? Theoretically speaking on ESPN 106.3. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios, Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys 